So once I have a, an image of interest scores, I want to extract only a few of those as my most interesting points. So I can do that by thresholding. But I would probably get too many points. You know, I would get whole regions of points that were higher than the threshold. So I don't want that many. So all I want is points that are greater than the threshold and that, that also are a local maximum. So one way to find a local maximum is by testing to see whether the score at that point is greater than its nearest neighbors. So this point is a peak because it's greater than the neighbor here and the neighbor here. In two dimensions, we would check for the neighbors uh, north, south, and east, and west of each pixel. So in MATLAB, that's fairly easy to do. Um, we can form a uh, series of four logical operations comparing the point at each point with its neighbors uh, in those four directions. The problem is, um, what if you don't have smooth peaks? Then you get too many detected features. So here I would pick up a peak here, a peak here, a peak here, here, and here. So rather than looking at only the nearest neighbors, we need to look further than that. So we want a point to be a peak um, within a local region of a fairly large size around that point. So we can do that by computing the local maxima of these scores within a certain region, let's say a square of size w by w. And then, so here in one dimension, I've, I've computed the local maximum within uh, a distance plus or minus two of every point. Then we test to see whether the original points are equal to the local maxima. At those points where they are equal, then that, that point is the local maxima. In MATLAB, that's fairly easy to do using the di IM dilate function. So we've seen this function for binary images. It also works for grayscale images, but instead of just simply dilating a region, it returns the local maximum. So I'm going to form the, the region that I'm searching over here, dilate that with my score image, test to see which pixels in the score image are equal to the local maxima, and those are local maxima. Those are the peaks I'm looking for. So here is the score image. Here is the score image dilated with squares of size 15 by 15. So these points are the peaks. I mean, they're the largest points within a region of 15 by 15. Then I test to see where points here equal points here. Those are only the few points that I've shown here. And I can also check to see if these points are also greater than a threshold and keep only those. So in MATLAB, this is how I would do it. I would pick a <coughs> size of a region to search over. Here I'm going to do a disk of radius r. I'm going to dilate the score image with a disk. Um, this I don't know if you need to do, but if you pick up points near the border, those might be um, erroneous. They might not have val valid score values. So I simply, I simply um, zero them out, assign the, a false value to the rows and columns around the border. Um, so once I have the peaks that I'm looking for, um, I, can find, I can extract those using the find function. And this will return the row and column of every point that is non-zero in this array uh, called Lmax. And then I want the values of those points. So this uh, single command takes um, the, the true values that are in this array and returns a list of those values here. So let me go ahead and run that. Again, I'll just grab this code. And I'll add it to the end of that previous code and then just run the whole thing. OK, so that's our input image again. Um, now we've produced um, the image called Lmax.
and it's a little hard to see, but um, you can see these points here are the um, are the are the local maximum of the scores. So, how many did I get? Um, I've got um, my scores in this array called VALS, and VALS looks like I have 18 of them, and those are the values of the interest point scores at those peaks. So um, some of these peaks now are not going to be good peaks because um, they will occur in these featureless regions and they'll have low scores. So um, I'll probably want to get rid of those. So once I have those scores, I can um, do two things. I could just choose the top M scores or I could choose points with scores greater than a threshold. So here I'm, ch I'm showing um, getting points greater than a threshold by going through the array, testing to see if the value is greater than the threshold, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle around it. So let me go ahead and run that. And I do need to pick a threshold. I think I picked um, I found that a threshold of 4,000 worked pretty, pretty good for that image, but, but you would have to experiment with your image. Okay, so here are all the interest points now that were greater than 4,000 and local peaks. So they picked up the, you know, the points that I hope we would pick up pretty well. Some of them we missed. Um, but other, most of them look pretty good. Okay, so once we've extracted the interest points from the image that we think are going to be good to track, we want to match them to the other image. So we can do that by minimizing the sum of square differences um, with its match in the other image. Now, in certain conditions, this is equivalent to maximizing the cross-correlation score. So if I take the sum of square differences and just expand this, I get these three sums. So if, I, if my I1 and I2, I0 are approximately constant over the size of the patch, then these two quantities don't vary. And so all I have left is this quantity here that varies as a function of u. So, and this quantity is just the cross-correlation score. So this quantity is high where the uh, image 1 patch matches the image 0 patch. And the reason we'd, we'd like to do it this way is cross-correlation can be done very efficiently in the frequency domain. Another way to look at this is to um, think of cross-correlation as uh, a vector product. So here is the cross-correlation, sum of products, um, well, all it is, it's the, it's the um, value of W times the value of F, corresponding values, product of those values, and that's just a dot product in a high dimensional space. So if I think of the images W and F as, as vectors in a large dimensional space of size M times N, then this is the dot product um, of those two vectors. So the dot product, of course, can be written like this. It's the magnitude of W times the magnitude of F times the cosine of the angle between them. So if those vectors are aligned, if theta is zero, then the score will be high. So those images will be similar because their vectors are aligned. This is kind of a graphical representation of that. We can take a template W, which is a small m by n thing, and ap apply that over the entire image f. The values outside near the border, of course, won't be valid. And we're going to compute the, um, the largest value of that cross-correlation, and that will be the location of w in f. So we get a high score where w matches f. So here's a, an example of a template here 
and a large image here. So this template actually corresponds to this little patch here, the eye of the hurricane. This is the cross correlation score image and you can see it has a large score here. It has scores everywhere else too, but the largest value is here uh, corresponding to the location of that patch. Okay, so F is not constant everywhere, so we need to normalize. So let's divide through by the magnitude of our two vectors, W and F. Remember the magnitude is just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of all the components. And that will give us um, a true indication of the angle between those two vectors. Now we can get better precision by subtracting off the means before we do this vector operation. So we're going to find the mean of our w, find the local mean of our f, um, subtract that from the values before we do the sum of products. And about down here is just our magnitudes of w and f. So if we do that, this is called the normalized cross-correlation coefficient. And the range is minus 1 to plus 1. So if the score is plus 1, we have a perfect match between the template and the image. If the range, if the value is minus 1, they're perfectly opposite. So wherever one was bright, the other was dark, and vice versa. So let's do a quick example here. Let's track a point from one image to the next. So I'll use this function called um, imcrop to extract the template from the first image. And I'll use MATLAB's norm xcore2 that does the normalized cross-correlation um, to match it to the next image.